The whistleblowing policy was launched in Nigeria on December 21, 2016 to encourage people to voluntarily disclose information about fraud and other forms of corruption or theft. The federal government of President Muhammadu Buhari acknowledged the failure whistleblowing to yield results, saying it has, it has lost momentum. The policy rewards a whistleblower who provides information about any financial mismanagement or tip about any stolen funds to the ministry's portal with 2.5% to 5% from the recovered funds by the Nigerian government. Now, looking at corruption and large spendings of government in Nigeria, does whistleblowing still exist? Joining us is the program manager, African Center for Media and Information Literacy, Afric Mill, Godwin Oyachulem. Godwin, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you too? Fine, thank you, Godwin. Um, the whistleblowing policy that was implemented by the Buhari administration was at best uh, uh, eclectic uh, uh, and at worst uh, an insult to the Nigerian to the Nigerian public. How would you respond to that? Well, I, I'll start by saying that I mean, if I'm not going to give the Buhari administration credit for anything. I'll give them credit for introducing the whistleblowing policy. The whistleblowing policy happens to be one of the most creative strategies in Buhari's, you know, uh, anti-corruption um, uh, fight. A number of strategies were introduced. I mean, but the whistleblowing policy happens to be the most creative one uh, among among them. And um, the policy was uh, launched December 20, introduced December 2016, yeah, by the, by the, by the Buhari administration through uh, the Federal Minister of Finance, then the uh, Minister of Finance, then uh, Mrs. Kemi Adeoch. Um, when the policy was initially introduced, I mean, it, it caught on among the people. The enthusiasm was great. People were interested. I mean, say, I mean, I mean th that was the first time the Nigerian people were being invited to join the fight against corruption. It, it has never happened. No government has ever brought the people into the fight against corruption. And the Buhari government thought that, I mean, they needed the people because the, the, they realized that corruption cannot be fought alone by the government, so they must involve the people. That and, and that was the reason playing policy, yes, that was the reason the whistleblowing policy was introduced. And that, it was, Godwin. it caught on very well. It started uh, uh, Godwin. like a wildfire. Godwin, yeah. some, I can of, hear you. I can hear you. some of us have uh, for more than a decade, for more than a decade, agitated for the proper submission of an executive bill to the National Assembly for a whistleblowing law to come into effect. Some listening to you now may think you are being unduly, unduly lenient to the Buhari administration because President Buhari, apart from the Federal Minister of Finance, had an Attorney General who sat in his office for eight years and did not deem it fit to submit an executive bill to the legislature for that policy that the, Niger that the average Nigerian was ready to engage with to become law. They wasted our time and indeed made a mess of the policy and ultimately made Nigerians now to further be disillusioned if such a very positive law that we've seen in other jurisdictions work, if it were to be submitted to the legislature now. How would you respond to that? I think I agree with you to some extent, but I wouldn't agree with you to, uh, to the extent that um, 
uh, it's a hopeless law. It's, it's yeah, I'm sorry, it's a hopeless. Of, it, there's no law yet. It's still a policy. Yeah, it's 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 uh, one thing. <coughs> I I wouldn't I wouldn't I I, I would discredit this gov the Buhari government for was the fact that. I mean, a, gov a government that, that, that had the good sense to introduce that policy ought to have also followed up, you know, with an executive bill. I totally agree with you. And, and, it's, and it stems from the, the lack of political will to fight corruption. If there was the will, you know, to really fight corruption by the Buhari administration, I think it would have, you know, gone on to, to follow up that whistleblowing policy with an executive bill and ensure that that bill was passed before uh, the, 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 the eight tier tenure expired. Yeah, to that extent, I think I agree with you. You know, that it was a failure on their part Godwin, not to ensure that. Godwin, I, I think a law. The law. You know, the, the, you know, so I think the evidence of the political will of the administration to really fight corruption. And we could all see it. We could all see it that at the end of the day, the Buhari government didn't fight corruption. You know, it just came and then, you know, I, I, no, I, instead of really... You see, yeah, it's, sorry? A, it's, ironic, it's ironic that we seem to agree, but uh, maybe, just maybe... I am sounding more like an average Nigerian, uh, a, 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 an average disillusioned Nigerian who is so disappointed at the missed opportunity of the Buhari administration. I, I guess, you know, I guess somebody like you who is a professional who knows how sometimes it's tough for things to move from non-existence to uh, to inquit the inquit existence we had under Buhari of the policy, maybe you are at least a bit glad. But I am telling you now that to an average educated Nigerian, many are feeling insulted that Buhari's administration practically, practically abused their senses by showing them or indicating that it wanted to fight corruption, but ended up leaving a sloppy policy. And you know, too, that there is a major difference between policy and law. And, but we, we seem to agree, but you seem to be a bit very lenient with the administration, maybe because you were, posit you were positively enamored that the policy came into being. Yes, I mean to that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think that. I mean, it was it was better than not having that policy. If if we didn't have that policy, I didn't know what we'd be talking about now. There would be no advocacy for for at least that policy has done two things now. One, it is it has challenged the culture of silence among the citizens of this country. So that policy has come out to say that you don't have to keep quiet when you observe wrongdoing or corruption around you. The second thing the policy has done to, to the Nigerian people is to, is, to, is to challenge that culture of acquiescence, the culture of agreeing, you know, of, 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 of agreeing with, you know, wrongdoing, you know, as if, as if it is legitimate, you know, practices that seem to make wrong practices that seem to make I mean practices that seem to make wrongdoing legitimate. That culture is challenging it. It says that you can't keep quiet now. At least we have that. But, but you know, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I still, I still, it, it's painful that we don't have a law yet. But we are driving towards that. There's an executive bill already which was approved by FEC in December last year. Mr. You know, so Mr. we were Yechala. thinking that before the Buhari government winds up, you know, in May 2029, we would have submitted that to the other, yeah. Mr. Mr. Submit it to the National Assembly. Mr. Oyechalam. Yes. Let me chase. I can hear you. Let me chase one of the most, uh, one of the most important reasonings that uh, you have submitted in this short program. One of the most important reasonings I, I, I have designed from your uh, from your
point is the fact that the policy properly implemented, initially the policy was, was quite well engaged by Nigerians. And properly, implement, uh, properly implemented, that policy could have democratized the fight against corruption, would have saved the state a lot of the wastefulness that we use to pretend to be fighting corruption, would have brought in enormous amount of revenue to the Commonwealth back from those who have stolen it, would have incentivized would have incentivized activism from the general public. So look at all the pockets of opportunities that the, mis the misapplication of that policy seemed to have squandered now. And yet, somebody played penalty to throw in and you seem to be praising that player. That after all, no, no, he no, handed, no, no. after all, he handed no, no, no. Jesse. I think that uh, we're we missing something. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear Hello. you. I can hear yes, you. Yes, yes. I think that we, we're missing something. You know, where I also agree with you that there is poor implementation of the policy. You know, the policy is to decide now in the Federal Ministry of Finance in, in a unit called the Presidential Initiative on Continuous Audit. So they are, that unit is the one that manages the whistleblowing policy. They are not funded. They are not. They are not trained in any way. They are not mobilized, cemented. Even if, even when you persecuted for making disclosures of corrupt practices in their various organizations are entitled to protection. That section... Uh, unfortunately... <clears throat> uh, um, unfor unfortu uh, Hello? Uh, the network is, uh, is as it is. Uh, we may go for a show. Nobody that I have... Seen. Can you hear me? Who is being persecuted uh, okay. today? Has it been? Go ahead, go ahead, wrap it up, wrap it up. Yes, yes, yes. I'm saying that the policy is managed by PICA. It's 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 in the Federal Ministry of Finance, a unit in the Federal Ministry of Presidential Initiative on Continuous Audit. They are the managers of the policy. So uh, they, are, they, are, they, 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 they are they are they are not funded. Okay, Mr. Godwin, oh yeah, Chalam. Uh, thank you so much. I think you must be a very generous marker. I would have loved to be your student because uh, all your students will be getting a plus plus even when when they are sloppy or not this thing because you seem to be a generous awarder of marks. It's been a pleasure, no, my no, brother. No, no. We, we will do this another time. Time is so so against us. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank you for this. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.